And you had this procedure to uh, uh, to correct a, a, an epileptic problem, yes. is that right? Trying to stop the seizures. I was having seizures like every day or so, or sometimes two or three a day. To control Joe's epileptic seizures, a surgeon severed the connection between the two halves of his brain. Cutting the corpus callosum like this prevented the spread of the electric storms that caused his seizures. But it also prevented the left and right halves of his brain from communicating with each other. In a brain like mine, roughly speaking normal, okay. at least all in one piece, the left half of my brain controls the right side of my body, while the right brain controls the left side. Oh, no. <laughs> His two hands operate as if controlled by two separate brains. What's happening is that each half of Joe's brain is given a separate instruction. He's asked to fix his eyes on the cross in the center of the screen. Anything flashed to the right of the cross goes only to his left hemisphere. Things to the left go to his right hemisphere. Because the two don't communicate, each hand does only what its half of the brain sees. Wow, look at that. <laughs> it's really like two different people doing the same... That's right. Same that's, task. Right. that's the idea. Okay, Joe, uh, I want you to keep your hands out in front In of an you. experiment that's now a classic in brain research, Mike Kazaniga, over 30 years ago, used a similar setup to find out if the two halves Let's of the see. brain are specialized to do different things. Ship. Joe that is being good. flashed a word only to one half of his brain. Words flash to the right Storm. are seen only yeah. by his left brain, and Joe can report seeing those words just fine. Piano. Yeah, Good. But when a word is flashed to his right brain... Didn't see that. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you but now watch what happens. To draw that with your left hand. I think I'm going to be lost. Why don't you try drawing another picture of it over here, if that will help you. Oh, phone. As Zaniga first did this experiment, it instantly proved that the ability to speak resides almost exclusively in the left hemisphere. Not until he sees what his right brain is drawing is Joe able to name it. He said church, didn't he? After looking at the picture. Yeah. But he had to figure out about as long as we did. That's really interesting. It's a, it's, a, it's a picture here of somebody communicating almost with another person. And the communication is not occurring inside the head. It's occurring out on the piece of paper. Yeah. Blob. Blob. I don't know. You want to draw a little bit more? So far, Joe has been seeing only one word. Cat. That's cat Things get sound. even stranger yeah. when he's flashed yeah. two words, each to only one half of his brain. The right hemisphere saw a toad. And yeah. And so his left hand draws a toad. So there's the toad. Oh, it's a toad. Yeah. Right. And this time, I was now, able to guess what was coming. Will they, will now, they put a little three-legged stool in there later, or what? Joe's speaking left brain saw a stool. Saying the word lets the hand that's controlled by his right brain in on the secret. That's great. <laughs> that's really interesting. And if he had seen that with, with the corpus callosum intact, he would have drawn a toadstool. Right. This time, instead of naming the word, I want you to point to the word. Again, Joe sees two words simultaneously. Bell goes to his non-speaking right brain. Music to his speaking left brain. When asked to point to a picture of what he saw, he chooses Bell. But when asked why... Yeah, why did you pick that one? Use it. Music. And when asked to explain... It was music and Bell, and it was a few minutes ago, the last time I heard any music was coming from the bells out here. Uh-huh. Banging away. So the bells yeah. outside here? So... But could not answer me. What's extraordinary is that Joe's speaking left brain concocts a plausible story of why he pointed to Bell, even when some of the other pictures more obviously represent music. Gazaniga believes this determination to find cause and effect, this desire to explain, is the left hemisphere's most marvelous property. One of the unique things to the human brain is this need to interpret why two events occurred. What was the antecedent of this? What caused this? Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine that a, that a species like us that has that little chip in its brain that 
asks those questions is going to survive rather well because it's going to figure out more about the nature of the world than a, than a species that doesn't have that.